Let's say you have that perfect photo that you just wanted, except there's some annoying family in the background. That can always cause a problem, but not today. Now we have GIMP. In this case, I'm using GIMP version 2.6.6, but you can use whatever version of GIMP you've got. Now, when it opens up, it may be a little bit confusing because you've got the uh, files, edit, select view, and all those things, but you have other toolboxes and layers, and we haven't discussed layers yet. We'll get to those another time. Now, first thing I'm going to look for in a toolbox is something called the clone brush. And I'll choose the, um, <clears throat> you'll see different things, different features on the toolbox, like the uh, foreground color, and you see the brush size. I can change all those kinds. But right now, I'm just looking for the clone brush. You'll see A for text. You'll see up in the top row, you'll find uh, uh, the select things, either rectangle or ellipse or um, freehand select. There's lots of different things. The four-headed arrow is for moving. You can rotate. You can crop. There's so many things you can do with it. But right now, we're just talking clone brush. Now, to get into the uh, photo, we're going to zoom it. Right now, made by default, it started at 50%, but we're going to zoom in at 200%. So we're really going to get a clear view of that annoying family, the family that we wish had gotten out of the way while we were trying to take a photo of our kid. So I begin by holding down the Control key and clicking a certain spot on the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone that and make a copy of that. And then I let up on the control key and I move over toward the, the man's leg and I start just dragging. And what happens is that marker will drag and so will my, my uh, cursor and it will replace whatever I go over with whatever was in the spot so many pixels away. I can then move that and start at a new spot if I want to because I, uh, the grass looks different there so I can go ahead and and set a marker by holding down the control key and clicking somewhere else and then I start dragging and suddenly his body starts to disappear. Now I'll take a third spot where the path comes in and maybe I'll uh, use that to kind of extend the path from uh, where behind this uh, family. And of course once I've done that I start thinking to myself do I really need those people sitting on the uh, wall? I don't think so. So I'll click somewhere near the wall and I'll just drag and eliminate them. Now, I can change the size of the brush and I had to do that in order to, to do near the tree because the, the man's head was uh, kind of close to the tree. But um, you can easily change that just by uh, clicking on your toolbox. From that, I'm going to scale the image down to a much smaller, perhaps 400 for a width. Uh, in this case, I'll choose pixels and its initial width was 1600 but I'll hit 400 and then tab and that brings me to a nice sized image 400 by 300 that I can now save in a new folder or under a new file name so that I can have the corrected version of this image.